Hi and welcome to SQL Server 2008 R22 Node Active Active Cluster Configuration Video Series. We are configuring Office Machine for Hyper-V Lab Setup. My name is Prakash Heda. I work as a Senior Infrastructure Database Administrator. You can visit my blog at www.sqlfeatures.com to get the complete detail of the series. In this particular series, we are trying to use the office machine which is given to the DBAs to configure a Hyper-V lab and then trying out the complete series to ensure a configuration of domain controller, storage controller, as well as the two windows cluster configuration with SQL Server cluster. So let's move on to and the part one is what we covered last week where we prepared a Windows 2008 R2 VHD Hyper-V Lab which we booted from Windows 7. Today we'll be covering the part 12 where we prepare Hyper-V configuration networking. Also in the series I will be covering mostly the part where you will configure the parent hard disk configuration which will be needing when we'll going into the part 13. Let's jump on to it. So here is overall configuration we will cover. Here as you can see we are creating three VMs for this exercise. The first VM is named as w 2 gate r 2 dc This is a Windows 2008 R2 service pack 1 machine which is configured as domain controller, DNS as well as a storage server. The ISKZ storage server. Then we have two other VMs which are DB31 and DB32. These are Windows 2008 R2 SP1 nodes. And we'll be using these nodes to configure the Windows cluster and later on to configure SQL Server cluster. So now let's look at the kind of a network configuration we'll be doing. So we have two NICs we will be needing. One is a public NIC, Hyper-V NIC. This is you need if you want to access these VMs outside office machine. So to do that, uh, the examples which you see here is 10.0030 and 10.0.01 as the DNS gateway. Uh, this is something my router's gateway, so that's how I configure it. You have to check your router and configure this value according to that. This is completely attached to the physical NIC of your desktop. Now let's talk about the domain NIC. This is the virtual NIC we'll be creating with the help of Hyper-V. And this is the NIC we'll use for all our future configuration. The domain NIC is the one which will be used by the domain server at the same time for the clusters. The domain NIC will be used for domain server configuration as well as to boot the cluster configuration. Moving further, here as you see, cluster VIP name. 111135 is the value we are giving the IP address and this is the name of the cluster. This is a two node cluster. Now in terms of MSTDC, we will be configuring two MSTDC services, one for each cluster as we are planning to have a high availability on the MSTDC side as well. For SQL web, here is the IP address. And here is the SQL Server name. For the purpose of this exercise, all these 11 dot dot IP address values should be meeting everywhere. What you can change is 10.0.0.30. This is your personal network where you get the IP addresses. So that's something you have to configure. If your personal network is 192.168.0.1, in that case, that would be your DNS value. And you can change the IP address 10.0.0.30 to 192.168.1.100 and 101 and 102 like that. For exercise purpose, we'll completely follow these IP addresses so that you can get a reference with me going forward. We'll create two domain accounts. Doc.com would be the domain name and the admin user is called Doc Admin. We'll create another user called doc sql user this will be the user which has the regular access no extra privilege and this is the user we'll use to configure the cluster let's look at the storage configuration we'll be doing we are basically configuring five different disks drive q will use for quorum 
drive M used for MSTDC for the cluster node 1, drive N will be used for MSTDC for cluster 2, drive F and drive H each are node for one node for SQL Server data files, system files, as well as log files. In this example, we are not creating further drives, but in production actual scenario, you'll be creating further drives and distributing the files which are you are storing on F and H drive into the multiple drives, like one for data files, one for log files, one for TAMDB, one for system database. Right? So this is the basic configuration will follow throughout the series. So let's jump on to the exercise. Here is the Windows 7 machine where we booted last time. What I'll go is I'll go to EasyBCD and now I'll boot into the Hyper-V partition. So here is the boot menu. Let's click on Edit Boot Menu. I'll click on WTGET R2 SP1 Boot VHD. It's the boot OS time. I'll just make it a six and I click on save settings. You need to read bootloader settings save successfully. Tools and I'll restart. Okay, so we are boot into Windows 2008 R2 VSD box. Let's start configuring it. Let's see the network configuration. Everything is as expected. Click on change adapter setting, HYPHY. That's the name we want for this network, which is the outside network, if you look at it, the status of it, there is no change we made here. This is on 10.005 is automatically and this is the gateway what we'll be using. This is where you will be getting your configuration detail for the public network. Whatever the gateway you see here, that's what you have to put into your DNS and change the IP address according to that. This particular network, make sure that it is using the IP address automatically because all the other network which you'll configure, they'll be static into the VHDs, but they will get the IP address via using this for DHCP settings. IPv6 not needed, but for, this, uh, for the sake of this example, we will keep it as it is. So now let's start with hyper configuration. Click on roles, click on add roles. Click on Hyper-V, next. Do not select the network card here. We'll create a network bridge later to get a better connection out of it. Click Next. Let's wait for configuration to complete. Great, we need to restart. We close, restarting the machine, and let's wait it to come back. We are back after the reboot. Let's go to the Hyper-V configuration and Let's see, this is the basic configuration. Let's check the parent drive and let's configure it. Since I have stored it under the G drive in HYPHY, uh, the parent VHD is where we have the drive, the base drive, so we'll select that here. Let's go and check what we have on G drive under the Parent VST here, this is the boot file. If you remember the size is 15 GB and it was taken on 28, 21st of August. And if you go into the root, you will find this file. It's an exact copy, but this is the VHD which we are booting in right now. This machine is running under this VHD. So all files are coming from there. So we just make a copy of it, which we will use as the base configuration later. So let's go back to the folder and in the configuration, hyper v setting. For hard disk, we created the parent VHD for virtual machine. We'll go ahead and go to the G drive. Make sure under HYPA you have created these three folders for one for child VHD, one for parent VHD, and for VHD config. Select this, select apply. This is the standard configuration you have, you, if you use, then you'll be able to uh, keep the versions of your VHDs if needed. And if something went wrong, some process you missed while following the video, you can always replace the backups and you'll be able to continue from there. Okay, let's click OK, go back to it. Let's configure a virtual network. 
as you know there are three networks available in Hyper-V the external network is uh, to be connected with your physical NIC on the desktop while internal network is the network which will be available to the desktop as well as to all the VHDs while private NIC will only be available to the VHDs not to the desktop for this example we'll take an internal NIC we'll give it a good name domain NIC this is the main NIC we'll use for everything all configuration okay we are good on Hyper-V configuration I will go ahead and click on the networking so that we create the network bridge which will provide the IP addresses to all the all the VMs uh, give the same name click both of them right click and say bridge connections as I'm connected from my laptop I'm losing the connection here so I'll have to if you're on the desktop then you won't see this but if you're connecting from laptop to your desktop and doing the configuration in that case you lose the network connection because uh, the network IP given by this hyper HYP HY network is no more valid it will be coming from network bridge so I'll be logging back all right so as you can see I logged in with the IP address 10 0014 now this is the network bridge which will domain Nick will be using to get their IP addresses so if you look at it it's perfectly enabled not connected so this is where for this chapter we have configured the Hyper-V configuration the network network configuration as well as the bridge in the next chapter video we in the next video we will cover how to configure the domain controller so thanks for watching this video uh, much appreciated thanks for all your comments and subscriptions look forward to hear from you and i'll see you in next video till then goodbye